a pretty boy. Hey? For a man who weighs 22 stone and stands hey. 6 foot 5 hey. inches tall, Jeff Cape still retains a surprisingly delicate touch. Shot putting may dominate his life, but not to the point of monopolizing it. Capes has been breeding budgies for the last six years and is a regular exhibitor at the local bird shows. In fact, the collection of budgie winning rosettes takes second place in the Capes household only to the bronze, silver and gold hardware that clutters up the sideboard. This is in fact the um, European Indoor Gold Medal which I won in March this year, 1976. This is um, European Indoor Coal Medal, again in Gothenburg, 1974. This is the Commonwealth Games Gold Medal, which I won in New Zealand, 1974. And the European Bronze Medal, um, 1974. And this space here is in fact reserved uh, for 1976. A, a medal, I hope, from the Olympic Games. The gold, presumably. Well, one hopes the gold, but... Uh, any medal would do. Cape started shot putting as a boy at school, mainly because he was so obviously head, shoulders and navel above everybody else. He used to throw 56 pound sacks of potatoes just for the fun of it. He was also naturally aggressive, which helped. And his out of school activities provided an equally appropriate, if somewhat less conventional training. Yeah, you, you fought gang against gang. You know, this is when I was about 15 or 16. Never, you know, really, <laughs> I suppose, really violent. It was just typical kids having a go at each other. And, uh, but the, the funny thing about me is I was the, always the biggest and always the one who got most, most of the trouble, even at school. If somebody was cracking a joke in assembly, I'm the one who's always got seen, you know, because I was head and shoulders upon everybody else. And they could see me laughing. And uh, they used to come and try and have a go with me and uh, being pretty strong and aggressive. Um, I used to give a feel good idea, but uh, that, was, that was really the, the start of the, uh, the aggression, the channeled aggression into throwing at the shot. Cape's training schedule requires him to sweat through five hours exercise a day, most of it weightlifting. Here, it's a mere 30 stone. Come on, straighten the right leg. In a typical week, he lifts 120 tonnes. That's the equivalent of 18 double-decker buses. On occasions, he's even been called on to lift real cars to enable friends to change tyres. Because of this colossal expenditure of energy, Cape's burns up 12,000 calories a day four times the rate of a normal person. This means, though, that he also has to consume at least four times the amount of food of a normal person. The most vital element in Cape's daily diet is six pounds of red meat. In addition, every day he gets through one and a half pounds of cottage cheese, a pound of butter, a packet of cereal, two large loaves, a dozen eggs, a large tin of beans, two tins of pilchards, a pint of orange juice, and seven pints of milk. Again, every day. Feeding capes is rather like stoking a human furnace, and the person who has to do it is his wife, Jill. Well, you're continually cooking or preparing some meal all day. You say all day, I mean... How much of all day? Um, we start in the morning about 7.30 and carry on right through until about 8 o'clock at night. And after that, he usually helps himself. Now, this we've got here, this is his lunch, is it? Yes, that's lunch. And he'll, after that, he'll continue eating small, small meals, you know, nothing big, just continue eating all day. You say small meals, like what? I say about half a pound of cheese he'll grill and eat that, you know, with bread. <laughs> Certainly daddies and boys have milk pudding. Hmm? You get big muscles, aren't they? That's right, there's at you. You're going to throw the pudding at me, yeah? With food the price it is, no normal family budget could support the Cape's weekly shopping list. But fortunately, there are generous sponsors on hand to pay for most of it. 
The meat, which alone would cost 15 pounds a week, is provided free by a national chain of butchers. The milk too is free. And on the day we were filming, Capes was phoned by the company whose pilchards he eats to tell him that 380 tins of the stuff were on the way to him, again as a gift. Are you concerned at all about what the, the maintaining of this essential bulk is possibly doing to your health in the long run? I mean, there have been medical reports that maintaining the sort of weight that you have now could reduce your, your lifespan by up to a third. Yeah. Again, it is a problem. Uh, it's my decision. Nobody else's. I don't care what a doctor says. It's my life. I can do what the hell I want with it. Even if it's a shortened life? Even if it's a shortened life. You know, I, I feel that uh, if you are fit, I can outrun, out-sprint, out-jump, out-play, out-throw a guy half my weight. It's like, take, take a life policy recently. You know, a guy who can have asthma and, uh, and God knows what walking along the street who might have a normal body weight and he can fill out a form and get a life insurance, you know, and uh, he might be half dead. But me, I'm fit as a damn fiddle and I've got to take a life uh, policy out and go for a medical. You know, I'm as fit as anybody, really. I, I, don't, I don't think... Uh, I mean, the doctors talk about the man on the street, the big fat man, but there's no fat on me, son, none at all. <laughs> But for all that he would never choose any other way of life, Capes is conscious of the strain that competitive shot putting imposes on him. The budgies are his safety valve. Thrashing around a bird cage with a budgie net is an unlikely activity for an international athlete of Capes' size and strength. But if it weren't for his birds, Capes reckons he'd probably crack up. It's a question of uh, relaxation uh, from the hectic world of shot putting really you know i mean you travel all around the world you are aggressive when you throw you're aggressive to people around you and then i just come home and completely relax completely the opposite to what people see me on television and see me throwing i mean i go in there i can sit in there for three or four hours and talking to my birds and, and kind of relaxing myself and uh, this in itself helps me to prepare for the next competition Capes would never have got as far as he has in shot putting without an extremely understanding employer. An employer prepared to turn a blind eye to the amount of time he has to spend training and competing. He is in fact a policeman and has been since 1969. His workplace is the police headquarters at Brampton in Cambridgeshire. Police constable Capes used to be on the beat but since he achieved international status as an athlete, he's been given the job of putting police cadets through their physical training. Hands up. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now pick it up. Come. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. For the local police force, PC Capes is far more than just a gym instructor. He's a walking advertisement for them. The chief constable of Cambridgeshire, Frederick Drayton Porter, is particularly pleased with Capes. For the first time, he has a four-month waiting list of recruits. But there are critics who argue that, in view of the time Capes has to take off, he's really only a part-time policeman. It's a particularly sensitive point with Capes. I've been in the police force for six and a half years. I've done my three years on the beat. I've done two years on the cars. And I feel that uh, I've been given a chance to specialise in what I'm good at, such as teaching physical education. A person should be given a chance. If he's capable of teaching, that he's, he's given or, ch or chosen sport, or chosen thing in life. I mean, I, some people like training dogs, some people like being on traffic cars and whatever. I like being a, a fitness fanatic of, of teaching cadets, etc., etc. Somebody's got to do it, so why shouldn't it be me? We got to look as far as the communist system in Russia, where if you are good at sport or, or anything in Russia, you're given every facility to do it. If my opposite in Russia, Borishnikov, is a major in the army, uh, not because of his academic qualifications, I'm sure, it's because he's a damn good athlete. 
Um, then you go to the American system, where if you're good at sport, you're given a, a college education free of charge, provided you put the shot for the, for the college. I come from Lincolnshire, so why shouldn't I be given a chance in life to fulfil my ambition? If, if, it, if it's only a year, a year of my whole police career, isn't it worth it? I don't care what they say. I don't care what people say behind my back at all. If they want to put a knife in, great. But they're the people who's first to congratulate you if you win. That's the way I look at it. Capes is now rated among the top half dozen shot putters in the world. His prospects for an Olympic gold have never looked better. On a tour of America earlier this year, he won five out of six contests, beating the reigning world champion twice. Within the last fortnight, he's thrown a personal best of 70 feet, eight and a half inches, just a foot short of the world record. But just as important when it comes to the Olympics, Capes has always been able to deal with the big occasion. When I go out onto the field and I see the opponents I've got to compete against, I look at them. And by looking at them, if I can see fear in their eyes, you know, I, I tend to take every bit of their energy and I can feel myself getting strong. Uh, by just looking at them through their eyes and I feel that they're, they're really frightened.